In this video, I will show you how easy it is to get started so you can create toolpath related to SEMWorks. It starts with the job setup. The job setup contains information such as your stock, where you're picking up the part, and your setup out of the machine. All important information that is needed to get the chips flying. We will start by navigating over to the cam manager and then selecting job from the command manager. You will see that that activates the property manager to the left just like everything else you do inside SOLIDWORKS. And the easiest thing is to always start from the top and just work your way down. The first option is job. Here you can select if you're milling, turning, or using mill turn. The second option is called model. You can get more detail about this in our video in regards to stock selection, but basically what we can select in here is what we're going to machine. Since this is a standard SOLIDWORKS part file and not a multi-body or assembly file, we do not need to worry about this. Next, we can select our stock. This is what we will see when we use stock simulation to verify after we have applied our toolpath. You will see that there's a few options in here, and again, we will come back to these in our stock selection video. For now, I'm going to leave it at relative size stock. What this means is that the software will create a stock box that will include the SOLIDWORKS model. You can then add stock to the sides and top or bottom as needed. Many times you use this if you're not sure what the actual stock sizes are, or it doesn't matter for that specific job. I will quickly point out that the second option in the dropdown is fixed size stock. So if you, on the other hand, have this information, you should put it in. And remember to always physically measure your stock as it's common for it to come in under or oversized and could be a costly discovery after you machine your part. I'm going to skip fixturing, but what it will do in a multibody or assembly scenario is giving you feedback on collision detection with a fixture or a jaw on a vise. One of the reasons that machining in an assembly, including the machining table, vise, and work holding can be really helpful. Now what we have to do is setting our work coordinate system. It does two things. It controls where our zero zero is, or in other terms, where we are going to pick up the part out of the machine, and it also establishes our XYZ. Now, out of the machine, XYZ direction is pretty established, but here at the computer we have some flexibility, mainly because there's no rules about what is up or down on a CAD model. Let's take a look at the graphics area. What you see here in the middle of our part is our CAM work coordinate system. Now in the lower left of the screen, you will see a similar triad, that is the SOLIDWORKS work coordinate system. The colors represent the same, so blue is Z, red is X, and green is Y. But besides that, we really do not care too much about the one in the lower left. The work coordinate system in the center of the part is the important one. Again, we have different options depending on what we need, but let me show you how use stock and orientation works. Right now, it says top plane, and if we look at the work coordinate system, the blue z-axis is pointing up. If I select the face on our model, you will see it switches the z-direction. This is used if we have multiple setups like we do on this part. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, a quick tip here is that you can also select planes right out of the SOLIDWORKS feature tree. The second thing the work coordinate system does is establishing where we're picking up the part out at our machine. If you're using stock and orientation like we are here, we can select the drop down and select a corner. 
I am going to select top corner 3 and this will now be where the posted G codes 00, 0 will be established from. Calmly, this will be called G54. Now, check out the work coordinate system video to get deeper into the different options available here. There's more options in here, and I would definitely recommend that you do a little exploring as some of these features can save you a ton of time and make your life easier. But I'm going to hit the green check mark, and now I'm ready to start applying some toolpath to our part. Now, before we end this video, let me just quickly show you how we can add that second operation. So here I have my first operation. We have maybe already posted the code and the machine might even be running while we are sneaking in to program the next side. We really just follow the same principle as we did the first time. Select the job icon on the command manager and scroll down to the work coordinate system where I will select this face as my top and select the top corner 400 and our work coordinate system is all set up for our second setup. Again, we are now ready to create more toolkits.